ago, and uh, uh, just a few months ago, he said to me, Joe, do you believe in free speech? I said, yeah. He said, well, you're going to give one. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, no, it was totally on me to come out here. I was actually on vacation, and I couldn't make this in my schedule any of these other things, but I, I, I have to tell you, I've been in the financial services business for 40 years. I, I, I was an insurance agent. Uh, I ran insurance sales at Payne Weber. For the, I'm dating myself. It's, a, it's like a small Merrill Lynch for people who don't know. It's now part of uh, Swiss Bank. Uh, then I went to MetLife. I built their annuity business and had all their product development. So I've been in the financial services business a long time, so you can see the bullet holes. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and that's where it is. And, and one of the things that I saw, that I saw with Patrick, was uh, something that's completely unique and fresh and different, and I think it's the future of financial services. And, 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 and one of the problems we've had, and so some of you might be sitting there, I want to get into financial services. I don't know. Everybody says, you know, they're one step below a used car salesman or what have you. You know, it doesn't have the best reputation. And to some extent, some of that's cultural, you know. Um, cultural, the, the, the culture that was existing at the time was YTB, yield, and you know what that stands for, yield to broker. We always talked about how much money you make, but we never talked about the impact that we have on others. And, and so what happened was people got enriched, but they didn't get fulfilled. And that's really what my book was about, because there's a whole fundamental change that's going on in this country, and, and, and actually, actually through the world, through the world. And uh, I think we're in the midst of a society, uh, of a societal change to uh, a, a renaissance, a moral renaissance. And what's driving it? It's demographics. Patrick talked a little bit about demographics. And you know what demographics are? It's the future that can't be changed. You notice he showed 1946, right? You had to get arrested if you weren't selling washing machines that people would need it. Everyone was. Was, was building houses and what have you, so they were in the right place at the right time in terms of the industry that was there. So there's two fundamental issues that aren't going to get changed. One of them, demographically, is the aging population. As people get older, and once they get through, they begin to say, you know what, I want to make certain that what I do for a living has some meaning and purpose, that there's a broader issue. The other one is this millennial group, which you talked about. And by the way, I have to tell you, millennials, 1980 to 2000. I was never a fan. <laughs> Blame it on Mr. Rogers. Everybody's special. Look, I got my 18th place trophy, you know. <laughs> and, and, and you can't talk to them because they're doing this all the time. And that was, that was the way I viewed it, but I was wrong. This group is perhaps one of the greatest generations that we've ever created. Despite the fact that there's some foibles in there, the fundamental issue that they want to do, once you get down to it, is they want to have a positive impact on the world. They want to do something that's worthwhile. Let me tell you something. Financial services owns that space. Because the flip side of an aging population is the fact that the entitlements are going away simply because of the fact that people are outliving them. Do you know who came up with age 65 for retirement? Otto von Bismarck in 1880. You know why he chose that date? Nobody lived that long. <laughs> Guy's 64, tomorrow I get the pension. He's dead. And that's what happened. And we just blew past it. This is the fundamental issue of the 21st century, is dealing with the aging population in the world. In 2050, there will be 2 billion, with a B, people over the age of 60. There will be five countries with over 50 million people over the age of 60. China, India, United States, Indonesia, and Brazil. Japan, in 2050, will lose 18% of its population. By the end of the century, they lose half their population. China will get old before it gets rich. And the same thing's going on in Korea and a lot of stuff that's going on in Europe. One of the things in the United States that isn't that bad, and mostly because of immigration, Thank God for diversity. Thank God for the Hispanic community. I mean, we have to clean up our borders and do that, but you know, we have to understand something. We're a nation. We're a nation of immigrants. And you know, we have this thing called STEM. You know what it is? Science, technology, engineering, and math. We open the door on Monday, we close it on Tuesday. We should let them all in. Society is measured 
okay, by its diversity and its youth, and that's one thing that we have an advantage in. But here's the deal. The fundamental mission and purpose of our business is to make certain that people who are outliving their entitlements can have independence and dignity in their old age. Because this is the new step. It's called yo-yo. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true of those of you who have a regular job because it's secure, but what you found out and what you're seeing around you is the thing that seems secure is the least secure. And on this entrepreneur thing, I really don't know too much about it. You know, it's kind of risky and what have you. That which seems insecure is the most secure because it benefits on you. But the thing to get you through that, understand this. Understand this. Everyone says, well, I don't know. I don't know if I have the confidence to do that. Well, you know what? Everything starts with a commitment. You have to commit and make certain you do that. When you make a commitment, you have to have courage. Courage to make certain that you can do the thing that you're not too familiar with. And then you gain capabilities, and that's when you finally get to the last stage. So the only thing that I would tell you is this. This business is not easy, and you deal with rejection. But the only way that people can perform beyond which they think they're capable of is, is not motivation, but being inspired. And inspired to know that they do something significant and worthwhile. And I'm telling you this, and I know it, because that's the change that's happening. People in financial services are the heroes of the 21st century because the government and corporations ain't going to do it. How are people going to have independence and dignity? And it's just what he's dealing with. That's why I was so impressed. I, I was in Vermont on vacation, and I flew my ass out here to see this. He's done it. The average age was 59. We've done a lousy job of attracting younger people and keeping them in this business. You know what I got in the business? You know, you got in, you said, hey, come on in, you'll be this, you'll make a fortune, man. You'll be a food, you know, you'll go on trips, you know. Eat what you kill. You know, all this <laughs> and, and, and that was appealing back to, you know, in rugged individuals. These millennials, well, one of the things they want to do, they want to work in teams, and they'd rather get less money to do something that's worthwhile. And it's also, as the population ages, that's why it's great to see we have the different age groups, we have different ethnicity here, and what your task is, and what he's doing, is to revitalize financial services to deal with the people who most financial services people don't deal with, and that's the real people. A lot of the clients in this organization, well, they have affluent people, but they'll never be rich, but they don't deserve to be poor. And I think that's one of the things that this culture allows to happen, that it supports the idea of doing something significant and worthwhile, which gives you the courage to follow your commitment to make things happen. So I'm telling you, because I've been there, the first time I met Patrick and I saw his thing, I said, I got to get on board with this thing because I just think it's fabulous. And this is a great entry level for folks like you to be thinking about it. And this is something you want to do, is to know that you would be making a commitment to a company that not only supports you, but also creates a culture that constantly celebrates the positive impact we have on others, because that's the thing that gives you the courage to do the things you need to do. So thank you for having me out here.